Welcome back, my sweet friends. So good to see you. We are literally three days away from New Year's Day. And I think so many of us are excited and ready for a brand new 2021. I know we are. We are so glad you are joining us today. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. And this is the channel Frugal Money Saver. We are an early retirement debt-free couple living in the state of New York, and we just show you basically how to live life more abundantly with less money. And we have a good time doing it. So today's video, let's get right to it. I am going to talk about what we're doing in January that we have never done before. And you're gonna hold us accountable. And if you wanna jump in and do this with us, this would be so much fun. And the second thing we're gonna do in this video is I made some homemade hoagie rolls, you know, like um, bread wedges. And we made some amazing like Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. So stay tuned for that. They came out so good. And then we're gonna do this fun DIY that I had never seen before on how to recycle some of these beautiful Christmas cards we receive. If this sounds good to you, stick around. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that notification bell, click and hold, so that you are alerted whenever we make a new video. I also wanted to say that I know I put a poll out on the community tab about us going live on New Year's Day. And you guys were so supportive and everybody was like, yes, please. Unfortunately, right now, there's still a couple things we have to work out going live because I think I would have to do it on my computer. We just want to make sure before we do something like that, we actually know what we're doing. But I will put up a regular video on Friday, New Year's Day. Please look for that. But for right now, the live video, we have to put on hold until we figure out exactly how to stream and we want it uh, to be flawless. Basically, we don't want to get on there and we're fading in and out or whatever. So I appreciate you all wanting us to do this and I promise we will. Let us just figure out the kinks first. What are Paul and I doing for January that we have never done before? I know the rest of the world is doing a no spend January, but realistically, we talked about this, right, Paul? And it was just like, that is not something that I can positively 100% say that we can do. And I don't want to, you know, I try to keep it real here. And I don't want to say, oh, I'm not going to spend anything in January and then have to go out and buy a gallon of milk and then not tell you people about it. That's like ridiculous. So what I want to do is we are doing a low spend January, which means nothing can be bought that is not essential. So our food budget for the month will be $100. That is it. And there are 31 days in January, so that's a long month, but we are going to eat out of our refrigerator, our freezer, our pantry. So we are allotting ourselves $100. That is it for the entire month. I cannot go to the thrift store with that $100. Um, we can't do a pay-per-view movie and get that instant gratification of wanting to see something and wanting to see it now. It has got to be allotted for food. I'm thinking mostly produce, fruits, um, things like that. Dairy, we are going to keep you updated on a weekly basis. So basically it's $25 a week. And again, we cannot use it for non-essential purposes. Our freezer is packed, our refrigerator is packed, and our pantry, especially from the holidays. You have bigger meals, we put stuff away, we froze things, we have treats that people have given us that we froze and we put in the pantry, didn't even open yet. So we should be okay. Paul's birthday though is this month. We're going to utilize what we have in the house. He loves meatloaf, so maybe he'll pick meatloaf for his meal. We have shrimp, so maybe he will pick shrimp scampi, but we are gonna stick to this. I would love you all to do it with me. Comment below if you're in on this. Again, to say a no spend January, honestly, 
we're gonna need milk, we're gonna probably need eggs, we're going to need things like that. And January and September are tough months for us because that's when our taxes are due. We figured this would be a perfect month to put this into effect. And I really hope you join along. Now, what do I do? I see a piece of vintage Pyrex. I cannot buy it. Well, you know what? We're not gonna go into the thrift stores for the month. This is gonna be really challenging. We have never done this for a full month. So I'm excited to do it. What are we gonna do instead? Basically, it's January in the Northeast. It's like 15 degrees outside. What are we gonna do? Well, I talked to Paul. There are so many projects we have allotted and we will share them with you. I have stacks of old magazines because I get free subscriptions. A lot of times you do like a survey and they'll send you free magazine subscription. I've gotta go through them, declutter them. If I see a recipe, pull it out. We have free bulk pickup here in February for our trash. So Paul's going to go through our shed and we're going to gather everything we can to put out for the free pickup. We are going to declutter the bathroom closet. Our bathroom closet, I know most people's probably just have towels in there. Um, but we have towels, we have soap, shampoo, I mean, whoa, it goes on forever. So this is all stuff we're gonna to wanna to share with you and this is what we're going to be doing in January instead of spending money. I'm gonna just say this is the third time I have tried to say this. I've edited the rest out. There are no non-essential purchases the month of January. Paul is laughing at me. I just couldn't say it, okay? Must be like a mental block here. So I'm excited to do this and please jump on board if you would like to. What I wanna do now is show you a little DIY a girlfriend of mine sent me. She sent me a picture she had wrapped at Christmas time and I was like, oh my gosh, that is lovely. What did you do? And she's like, I repurposed last year's Christmas cards on top of plain wrapping paper. So I wanna show you what we're going to do. And before I even begin this, I wanna say thank you. I just went to my PO box yesterday and there were a ton more cards there. So if you sent me a card, guaranteed I will get you one. It may not be a Christmas card, it may be like a New Year's card or a season's greetings, but tomorrow, which is Wednesday, I will be sitting down to finish all the ones I haven't sent out already. I wanna thank you all, Paul and I both, for the little gifts, for the cards, for the sentiments that you continue to send. It is such a blessing to us. And please know that if you sent us a Christmas card, I am getting one out to you. I got a bunch out, but like I said, I went yesterday and there was a stack more. So I am gonna take some time and I'm just gonna enjoy writing you all again. Thank you, it means the world to us. This is what I wanted to show you. Look at how beautiful these cards are. We received so many beautiful cards. And what do you do with them? It seems like such a waste to me to throw them out. It really does. These cards are so lovely. There's so many beautiful ones, honestly. All of them were beautiful. But what can we do with them? I know a lot of people make gift tags out of them. And I think that's a lovely idea. They'll take them and punch a hole and use them as a gift tag the next year. But I thought, after I saw my girlfriend's DIY, I'm gonna take it a step further. After Christmas, Tissue paper is extremely inexpensive when it goes 50% off, even 75 and 90% off. Grab some tissue paper. Another item that is always great to buy on clearance is Christmas wrapping paper. But if you wait, which I advise you to, till the 75% and 90% off sales go on, there's usually not a lot of great wrapping paper left. That is okay. Because you see this paper? Doesn't look like anything special, but wait till you see what we're gonna do with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these little salt and pepper shakers and I'm gonna wrap them in this tissue paper. So I just took the tissue paper, wrapped the box. Now this is nothing amazing to look at, but look at how many cards we can use, I mean, I just grabbed three that I saw that would make 
an amazing addition to the top of this package. We have this beautiful Mary. We have the polka dot tree that I think would be amazing or even the beautiful cardinal. I'm gonna use the tree on this. Now what's neat about some of the cards now is they actually come with like a little overlay on them. Now look at this. Look at this package. That is absolutely beautiful. You have used tissue paper that was a minimal amount of money because you bought it at the 75% clearance. And even if this was white, this would be beautiful. I just went with the polka dots with the polka dots. But as you can see, even if we put the cardinal on top, how beautiful. And I'm not wasting this card. And I can still use this top part on another package. Let me show you another one using just simple, everyday, nondescript paper. This is some pretty nondescript paper we got for 90% off last year. I think it was at Target. But it was nothing, you know, okay, what do you do with it? It looks nice. I could use it, you know, whatever. But then when my girlfriend showed me how to take a card and transform the whole package with it, I mean, you could do something like this one, which I thought was lovely. Um, this one, look at that. Oh my goodness, it would transform the whole gift. You take the, the wreath off of this one, or you could even take the whole piece and put it that way, or you could even do it this way. I mean, this, this nondescript paper, this plain paper now has taken on, if you were to do for a child's gift, the peanut, I mean, beautiful. Or even adults, we all love peanuts. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Look at this one. The simple old fashioned card. Look at what that would look like on there. So be creative. Don't toss these cards out, please. They are so beautiful. Read them, make them into gift tags, save them for next year and use as an embellishment on those, those plain wrapping paper rolls that are going to be 75 to 90% off and a lot of people leave them there. Look what you can do with this. This is absolutely lovely, absolutely lovely. So just a little encouragement to reuse and repurpose what we have. I am so excited to wrap gifts for next year. I mean, I wish I had known this tip um, years ago. I just, and maybe you all know it and you're like, Emmy, really? We've been doing this for years, but I just love the idea of taking even plain white paper and putting these beautiful cards to showcase on it. I'm really excited and I think it came out beautiful. So I hope that was encouraging to you. Now Paul and I are going to be making Philadelphia cheesesteak sandwiches, but we've never been to Philadelphia and we're not from Philadelphia, so this may not be the way a true Philadelphian makes it, but I guess it's like an Italian version of a Philly cheesesteak. It came out so good and you can use any kind of beef in this. We use leftover prime rib, but you could use leftover roast beef or a steak, what? So I thought a Philly cheesesteak sandwich would be awesome but I didn't have any hoagie rolls. So I said, let's make some. You know me, okay, I'm always up for something. <laughs> it's a new recipe for us, so it's going to be us sharing it together. I am going to put in my bowl two tablespoons of sugar, and I'm going to add two and a quarter teaspoons yeast. And I'm gonna add a quarter cup of warm water. And I'm just gonna let that sit a minute and proof. I usually use all purpose flour, but this recipe was pretty specific about using bread flour. And I happen to have bread flour in the pantry. So it turned out to be a total blessing. Our yeast proofed beautifully. And now I'm going to add two cups of flour and another three quarter cup of warm water. Okay, I'm gonna put my bread hook on and I'm gonna give this a good mix on medium speed, just till it's incorporated. And now we're going to add another two tablespoons of water. One, 
two. And I'm also adding one more cup of flour. I'm looking at this dough and it's appearing to me to be pretty dry. So I'm gonna add another two tablespoons of water at this point, warm water and we'll see how that works. Here's our dough after six minutes of kneading and it feels absolutely amazing. Now what we're going to do is take four tablespoons of cold butter. What you can do is take each tablespoon and cut it into little pieces because I think that's going to help incorporate it just a little bit more. I am going to show you this dough. This is the weirdest dough I have ever worked with. But because we're keeping it real, I am going to follow this through. I'm going to keep incorporating it. The recipe says to keep incorporating it. Can you hear that crinkling in the back? That's Dixie. It says to keep incorporating it. So I am going to keep incorporating it until the butter is mixed in. But I had to show you this. It's just different. Okay, let's keep going. Just so you know, in the beginning, you could have added a teaspoon of salt. My butter was salted, so I did not add that. But by all means, if you're using sweet butter, then definitely add a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to let it go for about another minute or two. This is about four minutes of kneading, and it's still not what I would call a really workable dough. So I'm gonna just knead it for another two minutes. So I took it out after kneading it about another three minutes, and you can see, despite the weirdness of the dough before, it's actually great. I'm gonna put it in a grease bowl. I'm gonna cover it with a piece of plastic wrap, and I am going to let it rise for just about an hour. Our dough rose for one hour, and wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> it looks amazing, so I'm gonna punch it down, Look at this, oh yeah. We wanna shape them with as little extra flour as possible. So what I'm going to do is divide this into, we're gonna say about six pieces. Just roughly, you're gonna feel it. Three, four, five, six, and if we have to take a little from this one to add. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how we're gonna roll these out, because these are hoagie rolls. It's got a beautiful stretch the dough, as you can see. So we're gonna stretch the dough just a little bit. So it's kind of in a rectangle. And then I'm going to do this. And I'm gonna put them just like that. I moved a little quick, so I'll do another one. I'm going to take it, you're gonna put it in a rectangle, just stretch it with your hands. And I'm not needing any flour. This dough is not sticky at all. I don't know how big these rolls are gonna be. Oh, let's do this again. We're going to go in, in, over, over, under, under. And we're gonna make it so it's a log. This one's gonna be, let's make this a little thinner even. Okay, let's do another one. Working with dough is so soothing, so calming, especially when you work with a dough like this that is easy and pliable. Don't be afraid of yeast spreads. I tell you that all the time and I sincerely mean it. Okay, so we're gonna put this in a rectangle we're gonna go over, 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 and then you can even, there we go. Tuck under, tuck under, stretch. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish these up. Now what I'm going to do is proof them again. I'm gonna take a piece of plastic wrap, and this is the same plastic wrap I had over the bowl, so I'm not wasting it. And then I'm just going to get another little piece for the other three and I'm going to grease that as well. And this is going to go right over these. Now the trick now is we don't want to overproof this. So we're going to just drape it gently. Don't make it tight because then they're not going to be able to rise. 
So now we're gonna just take them and I'm gonna proof them for 30 minutes. That's it. Don't overproof this. So these rows for an additional 30 minutes and they are looking good. Ooh, I'm excited. So what I'm gonna do now is just, I'm hoping this knife is sharp enough. Yep, one, two, because you don't want to deflate them. One, two. One, two. Very carefully when you do this. In this cup is just a beaten egg mixed with a little tiny drop of milk. And I'm just gonna brush this right on top of these rolls. I am so curious to see how these are going to come out. I'm gonna put these in now, a 375 oven for about 16 to 23 minutes. We'll check them at 16 and see how they look. This is our leftover prime rib from Christmas day. We had a, what do we have? A two rib roast and it fed the three of us and we still have leftover. So that's what we're gonna make our Philly cheese steak yeah. out of. Oh, Dixie can smell it. You wanna say hi? Have your cameo? Say hi, mommy. Dixie, look, mommy. Where's that face? We need to see you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> then here are the bones, the two bones, and they have a bunch of meat on it. I am going to make soup out of this. I'm super excited. So we have some olive oil, just about two tablespoons of olive oil. Do you remember when the peppers went on sale for 99 cents and I bought a bunch of them? I sliced them and I froze them. Just such an occasion. And about a quarter onion. And we're just gonna cook this up. So we browned our onions and our red pepper. And now I'm just going to add the sliced meat. So we're gonna heat this through. Just gonna warm it a little because it's fully cooked. Then we're going to assemble our cheese steak sandwiches. These just came out. They cooked for 19 minutes and oh my goodness. Oh, they're super hot. Listen, she thinks somebody's at the door. They're hollow sounding. They look amazing. I am going to let them cool a minute and then I'll put them on a wire wrap and they are ready to make our sandwiches. I'm just pushing this together and I'm gonna take, we just have simple American cheese. I'm gonna put it right on here like this. I'm not gonna put it on the sandwich because I wanna make sure it melts and I'm just gonna cover it. Well, let's see what the inside of this roll looks like, okay? Oh my goodness, it feels like it's light as air. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at the air pockets. Look at this bread. Oh, we did it. We made a hoagie roll, Paul. <laughs> what are you thinking? Hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to assemble this sandwich and then Paul's going to take a bite for us. This is our finished product. Here's Paul's. He made a little horseradish and mayonnaise sauce for his. I prefer mine just plain, but you can see that yummy melted cheese goodness. Do you want to take a bite, Paul? Paul's going to take a bite. Take a bite of the giant sandwich. Look at that, huh? Ready? Dixie wants a bite. Mm. <laughs> How's the bread? The bread is awesome. The steak is awesome. Everything is delicious. The bread is a is a regular fresh baked bread. You can't beat that. That's good. All right. Really good. So we wish you bon appetit. Oh, you had a good time hanging out with us. We had a great time. We love making these videos for you and we hope it shows. You all mean so much to us and I love to just inspire you. And I say this all the time, when I'm inspiring you, you come back and you inspire me and Paul as well. Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed the meal. Oh my gosh, it was so good. <laughs> and the little DIY and just our no spend January, which starts in three days. And no, we're not gonna go out and binge spend now. So don't worry about it, Paul's laughing at me. Because, you know, some people may think, oh yeah, well you're gonna go. No, I promise. If I buy anything between now and Friday, I will show you on Friday, promise. Okay, so you know we love you. We keep it real here, you know. 
thank you so much for spending this time with us. It means so much to us. Please click that subscribe button. Give this a big thumbs up. It helps us so much, please. Leave us a comment. Let us know if you're jumping in and we'll see you Friday on a regular video. You know we love you and we wish you blessings. Stay well, stay safe. Until next time, bye-bye. So no non-essential purpose. No non-essential purpose. Pur oh my goodness, I just realized I can't shop after Christmas sales either. Okay, it's okay, Emmy. We're going to get through this no spend January. <laughs> okay.